Hello everyone, this is Rocket Erase and welcome back to the series on uh, Nanotech for Water Purification. And uh, in this uh, short video, in this audio clip, uh, we'll be talking about the dangers of using silver nanoparticles. So in the previous uh, two videos, I gave a brief introduction to nanoparticles, how they're helpful in today's uh, water treatment and all that. And specifically in the previous video, which is the second video, we spoke about uh, nanoparticles, uh, silver one, silver nanoparticles, and we talked about, uh, uh, I talked about uh, the effects uh, it has on various bacteria, uh, let it be Escherichia coli or other bacteria, Staphylococcus. Uh, so, <clears throat> anyways, uh, but uh, I would like to mention uh, that this episode is. Uh, Due to my interaction with a editor called uh, Joshua Ray, uh, you can find him on uh, this subreddit called uh, Nanotech on Reddit. So I really thank him. So thank you, Joshua Ray, for the information and sharing your data with me. So I won't be uh, sharing the whole data in this episode, but I'll certainly use it in the near future in one of the episodes. Anyways, uh, so what uh, Joshua Joshua Ray told me is that. Uh, uh, the use of silver nanoparticles is uh, is to be discouraged because there are so many harmful effects. So I'll be talking about how uh, that is uh, true and how we need to take care of uh, you know using uh, the silver nanoparticles judiciously, or perhaps we need to banish them if at all our research does not uh, find any uh, environmental friendly solutions. So let's get forward. So. After my interaction with uh, Joshua Ray, I did some uh, deeper study on how silver nanoparticles are useful, but also have very adverse effects. So in the previous video, I was uh, constantly congratulating or talking great about uh, the silver nanoparticles. So also in the last video, I spoke about uh, mostly about the bacteria that gets destroyed. And even though I have not uh, sp I have uh, spoken about uh, the size, shape, and the applications of various uh, silver nanoparticles, the episode seemed to be focusing mostly on bacteria more than the nanotechnology itself. So anyways, uh, nonetheless, uh, let's get started. So I'll make sure that the focus is on uh, nanoparticles from now on, from here on. So the topic of today's discussion in our series is uh, how are uh, silver nanoparticles dangerous? So, anyways, uh, so according to one article uh, that I found on Real Clear Science, uh, whose uh, link I'll be displaying below in the uh, in the description, which you can find out, uh, there are two important uh, studies that suggest that uh, silver nanoparticles need to be used uh, cautiously. So there are two independent studies, and uh, they have uh, good uh, literature on why uh, we need to cautiously use the silver nanoparticles. So the first one says that uh, uh, it is a fact that uh, silver nanoparticles are a continuous source of ions that could be toxic for aquatic organisms. So it also has a possibility of ending up in the food chain. So the experiment uh, that was done was like this. So algae, you must be knowing algae. So algae were exposed to silver nanoparticles and just within 15 minutes, the algae was exposed to a toxin and simultaneously there was a reduction in photosynthesis of algae. So its defense mechanism was also reduced. So it was found out that just within 15 minutes, uh, the algae's performance both in photosynthesis as well as defense mechanism um, uh, re got reduced. So this is how it gets affected. And also there is a fish called uh, rainbow trout. So you can uh, you can find more about it. Uh, it's also called as red band trout. So they are generally carnivorous in nature. So they eat insects, they eat uh, crustaceans, they also eat other small fish. So the studies have shown that uh, silver ions are very harmful to these fish. They cause uh, eggs, uh, their eggs to hatch before full development and due to which uh, huge amounts of baby fish generally die. So there are other studies as well. One that shows that exposure to silver, nano silver harms the cell's DNA and also changes their protein production 
in human intestinal cells so in our the cells which were taken from the human in intestines on which the experiments were done so it shows that uh, nano silver harms the cells dna and at the same time the study suggests that the cells can rebound from damage caused to them so even though the cells can re uh, rebound that's another story the problem comes with the fact that it can accumulate uh, the ecosystem within no time because of their very small uh, size uh, because of which they are called nanoparticles so they can pass through a lot of uh, materials a lot of membranes with ease so the major concern over here is bioaccumulation since uh, silver will uh, silver generally finds its uh, way up the food chain so let's say algae gets contaminated with uh, a lot of uh, silver and let's say uh, the fish eat uh, the algae so uh, since the fish uh, generally eats more algae than uh, just one algae uh, there is more uh, silver contamination in it <coughs> and going uh, via this route uh, humans will eat more than one fish so for every fish they eat uh, the silver contamination is more and more so uh, as of now a lot of uh, consumer products contain nano silver so the examples range from food packaging materials uh, textiles electronics household appliances uh, cosmetics medical devices and of course water disinfectants uh, in which we use uh, which is nothing but water purification and also room sprays so even though uh, nano silver is not directly toxic it is not directly toxic to human populations like uh, arsenic or lead is uh, it affects uh, aquatic life and then poses the problem of uh, bioaccumulation so even when it comes to the microbial microbial uh, resistance uh, provided by nano silver particles that we discussed in the previous video sometimes it is uh, generally seen in that the bacteria can become resistant over time so that uh, is a big failure so and also studies were done on lab rats and uh, lab rats uh, and uh, they were exposed to nanoparticles and it was shown that uh, silver nanoparticles can easily get accumulated in the brain induce uh, neuronal neuronal uh, degeneration so it is like uh, your neurons and your neural neural network gets degenerated and also necrosis necrosis is nothing but uh, the death of your uh, tissue like all the tissues one by one so in the brain so death by tissue breakdown so after a long uh, exposure so after a long time of exposure so this is what happened to lab rats and uh, also silver particles kill bacteria but uh, they may also kill uh, the good uh, non bacterial cells or you know the good bacteria which is required if uh, silver nanoparticles are inhaled or ingested so that is a bummer because uh, certain bacteria is required in our uh, uh, daily uh, what is what to say the digestive system or any other system for us to uh, properly function in the body so such good bacteria actually helps the human system so they have been with us since uh, since the time uh, humanity has spread up spread uh, has evolved let us say so <clears throat> anyways uh, the ex also the experiments on the pulmonary exposure of uh, rats uh, demonstrate that uh, ag nanoparticles uh, which are silver nanoparticles accumulate in the lungs uh, they are able to translocate in other organs and like liver, kidney, spleen, uh, brain, but they are uh, but uh, they are also cleared by excretion. <clears throat> so this entails that, uh, and this data is from Joshua Ray. So I thank him for that. So this entails that uh, silver nanoparticles can cross the air, blood, and blood-brain barriers easily because of their size, uh, very small size. And the blood uh, carries the particles in the circulatory system. The particles accumulate in the filter organs, especially in the liver. So, in general, uh, uh, smaller particles have a large uh, ability for a widespread uh, distribution, but also an uh, increased uh, possibility to pass through filter organs like uh, liver and spleen, and also be excreted. So, even though it can be exc uh, it can get exc excreted, uh, you have seen that it is a it's a very big problem that needs to be addressed 
so further uh, future uh, research whichever is being done needs to focus on these uh, these facts and these findings and need to make sure that uh, in that environment and also the human populations do not get affected by overuse or even the basic usage of uh, silver nanoparticles in daily life but uh, anyways uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, obviously say that it is useless so silver nanoparticles are highly useful they uh, it is best to say that they kill just more than bacteria so that is one uh, one major issue that uh, surrounds the silver nanoparticles the usage of silver nanoparticles in at least uh, water purification so that's it guys that's it for this uh, audio clip so i hope you've understood uh, the <coughs> the um, the situation surrounding nanoparticles silicon nanoparticles especially so i'll see you guys in the next uh, coming up videos and audios so make sure that you share this with your friends and tell them about uh, uh, this uh, science so that they also get acquainted with it uh, they they also uh, get the knowledge and so as i always say so spread the knowledge and also the love so thanks a lot guys thanks a lot for listening i'll see you in the next one bye bye